Hey guys, so last time we spoke, I mentioned that next vlog, I'd be playing some 510 at the Aria, but uh, as you guys can see, that is not the Aria. In fact, it's a little bit of a more popular spot known as the Bellagio. The reason I'm here today and not Aria is that Aria didn't end up getting a 510. Turns out it's not so easy to find a 510, even in Las Vegas on a uh, Monday afternoon. So Bellagio it will be, they've always got plenty of games. And also it seems like there's a shortage of people making 510 no limit hold'em vlogs from the Bellagio, you know? So I figured there's a pretty good market for me to capitalize on. Anyway, Rampage Poker is in here as well. No backpack. <laughs> we actually showed up like 20 minutes ago. We already got a seat, but I had to come out and let you guys know what's going on before we get into the hands. And before we do get into those hands, I also wanted to let you all know that I'll be playing online a little bit more actually joining up with uh, Rampage himself on Club GG. It's an app that you can find in the app store and uh, there's gonna be some friendly 50 cent a dollar, 25 cent, 50 cent, maybe some one, two, just some small stakes cash games that you guys can join me in. Like I said, Rampage will be jumping in as well and also Johnny Vibes from time to time. So if you guys are interested in that, just download the app and hit the link in the description box We'll get you all set up. It's gonna be a group chat with myself and the admins. It's pretty straightforward and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Hope to see you guys on the virtual felt. But anyway, that's it for now. Uh, enough of the talk. Let's get inside and play some 510 No Limit Hold'em. Chill, 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 chill. All right, here we go, guys. Playing some 510 at the Bellagio. The max buy-in for this game is 1500, so that's what I decided to buy in for. And in the first interesting hand, we look down at Jack Nine of Hearts in the big blind. There's a middle position open to $30. Everyone folds, and I decide to make the call. So heads up out of position to a flop of ace nine three rainbow with one heart out there. So we've got middle pair and some backdoor possibilities. So when I check it over to him and he bets $20, not looking to go anywhere just yet. So I make the call and we see the eight of hearts on the turn, improving us to a flush draw. Once again, I check it over to him though. And this time he sizes up to $130. Certainly don't want to raise, especially facing this sizing on an ace high board. So that just leaves one option. I make the call. And we're off to see one last card, which is the Ace of Clubs. Interesting card here because it makes it a lot less likely he's got an Ace. Again, though, I don't think there's much merit in doing anything besides checking, so that's what I do. And once again, he sizes up to $500 after thinking it over for a little while. On one hand, it seems a lot less likely that he's got three of a kind now since, you know, math and stuff like that, right? On the other hand, it's a pretty big sizing, so there's not a lot of hands that I really have to call with here. Kind of a close spot, I gotta say, but after thinking it over for a bit, I decide to just let it go. In the next hand, we see a late position limper, and I look down at A7 offsuit on the button. Pretty miserable hand to try to raise someone with, but this guy in particular looks like he's just here for a good time. So let's play some poker. I raise it up to $40, and he makes the call. Heads up to a flop of Ace Jack 9 Rainbow. Obviously a great flop as one of my cards matches the biggest card on the flop. So when he checks it over to me, I'm happy to put in some more money. I make it 30 and he proceeds with a call. Off to a turn card, which is the queen of spades. Could easily improve him to some straights or two pair possibilities. So when he checks it to me, I decide to check it back and see what he wants to do on the river, which is the eight of clubs. Further increasing the probability that we're beat. But once again, he checks it over to me, and even though there's a ton of possible hands that beat us, such as any hand containing a 10, or really a bunch of two pair combinations, I think it's worth trying to get some value from a random queen, or maybe even a jack that called on the flop and gets a little curious here on the end. So I throw in $100, not expecting to win every time if he calls, but often enough that I think it's fine. And it turns out this time it is fine because he calls, I show the ace and we're good. So I managed to get a little extra value here with a mediocre hand. In the next hand of the night, we see an early position open to $40 and action gets all the way to me in the small blind looking down at pocket tens. Definitely gonna be raising in this spot so I make it 150 and he makes the call. 
He's only got around $600 behind at this point, so when the flop comes down 5-4-3, I think I'm happy to bet small and see what he wants to do, so I put in a $100 chip, at which point my opponent decides that's not quite enough as he announces all in for $600. Sure, sometimes he'll have a hand like jacks or maybe even queens, but whatever. Other times he's gonna have nines and eights and flush draws, etc. So I make the call and it turns out we're up against pocket sevens. So a pretty good situation. Turn is the nine of hearts, river is the deuce of spades, and we end up getting the max on this pretty good flop that gave us both an overpair. In the next one, there's an early position open to $40. I look down at pocket sixes in late position and make the call. And Ethan makes the call on my direct left. Three ways to a flop here, which comes down Jack, seven, six. Oh boy. Pretty wet flop, lots of available draws, but of course we've got three of a kind. So when the early position raiser checks it over to me, I'm just gonna start betting here. Lots of hands to uh, get some value from, so I bet $100. Ethan makes the call on my left, but the initial raiser folds. So heads up, just the two of us going to a turn card, which isn't really my favorite. It's the 10 of hearts. Obviously improving nine, eight to the nuts now, as well as probably giving him a lot of equity with whatever draws he's got. For that reason, I think it's best to check and see what he wants to do here. It would kind of suck to bet and get raised. Plus, you guys know Rampage. Oftentimes, he's happy to bet when people check it over to him. So that's what I do. And indeed, he throws in $220. Raising seems like a little bit of an overplay. So I put in the 220 and we're off to see one last card, which is the 10 of diamonds, giving us a full house and eliminating any concerns about 9-8. I check it over to him for a third time, obviously going to go for a raise this time, but he thinks better of it and checks it back. Based on that action, it seems that we're winning. I flip it over and indeed, that's what's going on here. And later he told me he had Jack Nine of Hearts, so I guess we did dodge a fair amount of outs on the river card. In the next one, I look down at my favorite hand on the planet, Pocket Aces in early position. I raise it up to $30 action folds all the way to the big blind, and just when it seems like disaster will strike, at least he does make the call. So we got some action here going to a flop of jack, seven, six, with two diamonds. He checks it over to me, and I'm happy to start betting here, despite anticipating a check raise some percentage of the time on this board, but we'll just cross that bridge when we get to it. So I put in $40, and my opponent makes the call. Turn card is the nine of hearts, and once again, he checks it over to me. Kind of a dicey turn card, Again, it's one that could easily improve him to two pairs or some straights. But at the same time, it's also going to be a card that gives him a lot of equity with hands that he called on the flop with, which we still have beat, like Queen Jack, maybe Jack 10, 9-8, uh, etc. So for those reasons, I'm happy to continue betting for value and pretty sizable as well. I make it $130 this time. And once again, my opponent makes the call. So a pretty good situation developing thus far, I think. That is until the river is the 10 of clubs, making the board just way too dangerous to go for some extra value on, even for me. So when he checks it over to me for a third time, I'm happy to check it back and see what he's got. And what he's got is 10-9. So we're gonna lose this one as two pairs is better than one. At this point, we get moved from the must move table to the main game. And in the first interesting hand there, the straddle is on and I look down at ace nine offsuit on the button. Happy to raise this one up, I think so. I make it $60 and only the straddler makes the call. Going to a flop here of king, king, four, rainbow. On these high paired boards, I think I'm happy to bet pretty much all my hands for a small size. So when he checks it to me, I put in $40. At which point he raises to $200. I feel like this could easily be just a bluff induced by my small flop sizing. So for those reasons, I decide to call in position Pretty confident that ace high is still the best hand here. So we go to a turn card, which is the seven of diamonds. Seems like at this point, the wind is out of his sails after being called on the flop because he checks it over to me. Now I decide to bet. Honestly, I'm not really sure what this bet accomplishes aside from maybe denying equity from two live cards. But even if that's what I'm trying to accomplish, a smaller sizing would do the job, I think. Anyway, I decide to bet around 200 bucks and he quickly makes the fold. So it doesn't seem like it mattered too much. The very next shuffle, however, things get a little more interesting, where we see an early position limp, middle position raises to $30, and I look down at ace, deuce of diamonds in late position. Small suited aces, I think, are good candidates for a re-raise. Not every time, necessarily, but at least some of the time, and in this situation, we are gonna have one of those times. So I make it $90. 
The limper now makes the call and the middle position player who made it 30 originally also makes the call. So we're gonna go three ways here to a flop of ace, queen, nine with two diamonds. So we've got top pair as well as the nut flush draw. But when the action checks to me, I don't really think there's a lot of value in betting here. In fact, this is a very easy hand to just check back with a weak top pair and possibilities of improving on the turn and river. So that's what I do. I check it back and we're off to see another card, which is the six of hearts. This time the early position player decides to lead out for $160. Middle position player makes the call. A raise doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense since it's pretty much just turning our hand into a bluff for not much reason. So I throw in the 160 and it's still the three of us to a river, which is the magical eight of diamonds, giving us the second best possible hand, losing only to jack 10 of diamonds for a straight flush, but not really worried about that. Seems like monsters under the bed mentality. Anyway, I'm happy to see that the early position player who let out on the turn continues betting and pretty sizable as well. He puts in $420. This time the player behind him folds and action is on me. At this point, he's only got $600 or $700 behind. Nothing to do but move all in here and hopefully get called by a straight or a flush, but not a straight flush, of course. And that's what ends up happening. My opponent snap calls, I flip it over and he shows us the jack five of diamonds. Pretty much a cooler, even though his pre-flop decision is maybe a little questionable. But either way, hard to brag about having a flush when someone else has also a very good flush. Just one of those things that happens from time to time in poker, and I'm happy this time to be on the right end of it. So not a bad start to the session, and we're going to try to keep it going in this next hand with Ace-Queen, where there's a limper in early position, and I raise to $40. We get called by the big blind and the limper, so similar to the last hand, we're gonna go three ways in position to a flop of ace, nine, seven with a flush draw out there. Action checks to me, and with a strong top pair this time, I'm happy to bet for value, so I make it $40. Big blind makes the call, player behind him folds. Heads up to a turn, which is the nine of spades. This time when he checks it to me, it's a pretty easy check back. He's gonna have a nine a lot more often than we are. And we could also bluff catch some missed draws on the river if we play our hand this way. So that's what I do. We're off to a river, which is the Jack of Diamonds. Not really the best card as now we're losing to Ace Jack and 10-8, which was open-ended on the flop. But when my opponent decides to lead $210, I'm not really looking to fold. There's still plenty of worse draws to uh, make this call pretty straightforward, I think. So I put in the 210 and it turns out we're up against King Queen this time. So another one going our way and pretty smooth sailing so far. In the next one, there's a late position open to $30. And I look down at Ace Jack in the small blind, pretty strong against what I perceive is gonna be a wide variety of holdings given that this guy opened in late position. So I make it 120 and my opponent makes the call. We're playing pretty deep here, around $4,000 I think. Anyway, off to a flop which comes down Jack 10-5 with two clubs. Most of the time I think it's fine to bet here, but maybe a small percentage we can check and see what he wants to start doing. I think it's a board he's going to have a lot of draws on, and he could even overvalue some worse hands like King Jack. So I decide to get a little tricky this time and check it over to him, at which point he bets $140. I proceed with a call, and we're off to a turn which is the three of clubs, bringing in the obvious flush draw. Once again I check it over to him. And this time he bets $410 fairly quickly. The way he bet and the size of his bet gives me the impression that he does not have a flush. What I think he's got is either a bluff like King Queen, for example, or maybe 9-8 suited. Sure, some percentage of the time he could be betting a flush this way, or maybe pocket tens, for example. But I think there's still enough hands that we beat to uh, make this call reasonable. So I put in the call and we're off to a river which is the five of clubs. So I decided to just check it over to him and see what he does, and he pretty quickly checks back. I'm feeling okay about the hand, I announce a jack, and then I realize I shouldn't be feeling okay about the hand at all when my opponent flips over pocket kings. Pretty surprised to see that hand there, I'm not gonna lie. I would assume most people would re-raise that hand pre-flop, especially being that we were so deep, but it worked out pretty perfectly for him, I guess. So, nice hand, man. In the next one, I'm in the straddle and we see an early position open to $60. Button makes the call, small blind makes the call, and I look down at queen 10 unsuited. 
pretty straightforward defend here, so I put in the 40 extra, and we go multi-way to a flop of 5-4-3 rainbow. Action checks all the way around, and we see a 10 of diamonds on the turn. Small blind checks it for a second time, and I think now we've got the best hand, and could easily have some bluffs that play this way, so I decide to bet half pot, make it 120. The original Razor calls, and everyone else folds. So heads up here going to a river, which is the deuce of clubs. Pretty miserable card, obviously, as now any ace high that called on the turn improves to a straight. So I check it over to him, but he pretty quickly checks it back. I announce a 10, and he shows pocket jacks. So not going to win that one either. Lost the last few hands. Trying to get back on the right track here, and what better way to do that than with pocket aces. In this one, we see an early position limp. I make it $40, and action gets back to the limper who puts in the old limp re-raise, and quite sizable as well. $440. Wow, the stuff dreams are made of, right? At this point, he's only got around $1,000 left or so. Kind of hard to mess this one up, right? We can either just flat call since we're in position, and most likely the money's going to get in no matter what, I decided to just get it over with and move all in, at which point my opponent quickly makes the call. So it seems like a likely cooler situation. And once again, I'm happy to be on the right end of it, and even more so that we end up holding against whatever hand he had. So pretty sizable pot going our way this time, and we're back to trending in the right direction. In the next interesting hand of the evening, once again we see a straddle, and I look down at pocket tens in early position. Standard open to $60, and now the player on my left makes it $220. He started the hand with around $1,500 or so, not really looking to do anything but just make the call when the action gets back to me. And we go to a flop of 863 with a flush draw. I check it, and he proceeds with a $260 bet. Not in love with the situation, but I'm not just going to fold an over pair, especially to one bet, so I put in the call, and we go to a Jack of Spades turn card. I check it over to him, and this time he decides to check it back. River is now the five of diamonds. Now our hand is pretty good. We still beat hands like ace-king, ace-queen, etc. But not really good enough to get value from worse. For all those reasons, I think it's a very clear check, and he checks it back. At this point, I think it's very likely we've got the best hand. And indeed, we do. No pocket kings laying in the weeds this time. We're going to take down another pot. Now in the very next shuffle... Yours truly puts on the $20 straddle. We see an early position open to $60. Big blind makes the call, and I look down at ace 8 off suit. Again, a pretty standard defend, so I complete, and we go three ways to a flop of ace 6 4 rainbow. Big blind checks it, I check it over to the razor, and he puts in a continuation bet of $60. Big blind makes the call, and already it seems very likely that ace 8 is not the best hand, but. Hey, we're facing a small size, and we've got top pair. Can't fold just yet, I think. So I put in the 60, and we go to a turn which is the three of clubs. Once again, big blind checks it, I check it, and the initial razor continues betting, which in and of itself is a fairly strong play, even though he doesn't go too big here. He bets 140. This time the big blind folds, and action is back on me. And this is where I think it's easy to just get lazy, and make the call again, and when we eventually get shown ace-king or ace-queen, just bemoan our luck about having no kicker. But what I think is actually a better plan than just calling is turning our hand into a bluff through a raise here. And the reason why is, first of all, since we've got an ace, pocket aces seems pretty unlikely for him to have. And also this turn card could easily improve us to some better hands than ace-king and ace-queen. For example, 7-5 makes us straight now, we could also have hands like 6-3, maybe ace-3, etc. Not a lot of hands, but still enough that I think facing a raise and then an all-in would be a pretty tough spot for our opponent here. So I decided to spring into action here and make it $400. If he called, he would have around 1100 or maybe 1000 behind. So I'd like to set up a pretty close to pot-sized shove on the river. And it looks like that's what it's going to come to because my opponent thinks for a little bit and makes the call. Off to a river card, which is the Queen of Diamonds. Not really my favorite, of course, as we're probably not getting a lot of folds from Ace-Queen now. But that being said, he could still have hands like Ace-King, Ace-Jack, maybe even Ace-10 suited, etc. And hey, let's be honest. Having those hands in this spot and facing an all-in 
would be pretty miserable, right? So that's what I do. I stick to the plan and announce all in, hoping to not get snap called. Luckily, our opponent snap folds instead. So maybe we had the best hand, but what I think is most likely is we got one through here and happy it worked out. At this point, Rampage and I decided we've had enough after playing for around six hours. So we pick up our chips and head to the cage. Hope you guys enjoy the hands. <laughs> so how'd you do? We made money. We did not lose money today. We, we made money. Which is good. You made some more money. It seems. Yeah, I was in for sixteen hundred, and I won forty five hundred bucks. Yeah. Gifted aces. And then, you know, all the other hands. Pretty easy. <laughs> what a great setup. <laughs> His vlog will be out in about six months. Hope you guys are looking forward Coming to it. Coming soon in twenty twenty four. How did you do? Uh, I made 800 bucks. In for 2000, out for 28, something like that. So, we're, we're better than everyone at 510 Bellagio. <laughs> That's the conclusion. And no backpacks. No so backpacks. Really great. Uh, I told them about the Club GG thing. Yeah. yeah. It's a good time. Yep, yep. We're gonna, always in there. We're gonna be playing in there. But anyway, that's a wrap for the trip. Overall, I want a good chunk of money. Uh, this guy's still here for like another two weeks, but then we're going to Austin, right? Yes, it's splashing around in Austin. Yeah. Five, 10, 20, 40, 80, 163. 30. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's what's coming up next from us together. And get this kid to 100,000 subscribers, please. Come yeah. On, what we got. 100,000 views, not 100,000 subscribers. That is shady, I don't know. It's free, it's free. <laughs> Come on guys, I care so much about subscriber counts. So much. <laughs> great. Way to sell it. <laughs> You're doing great, man. You're doing great. <laughs> Alright guys, as always, thanks for tuning in. Good luck at the tables and we'll see you next time. <laughs>